Um, Say that again. I'm not going farther than this until you smoke them. Why? Because I don't want to get stung. You won't get stung. We're here at Church of the Pilgrims and their hives. You've seen these hives before, I think, if you've been watching the blog. Um, you can see how healthy these hives are, even those that are stuck behind the rose bushes. And we're going to see if we can take some more honey off of these guys and do some splits. Here are the nuke boxes we're going to transfer the uh, some brood frames into. And these will end up on our roof. We have three, uh, or probably six, queens ordered from a new apiary, an apiary called uh, White Oak Apiary in uh, Brewster, New York. And those are supposed to, be, supposed to be northern acclimated bees that are also resistant to mites. Not, they're non-treatment bees, they're queens. So um, we're looking forward to trying those out in these nukes. And then we've got some buckets here. We're going to be doing crush and strain for the honey extraction to the extent there is any honey. And uh, I think we'll probably only be able to fill one of these buckets. But it's always good to have a second one in, in just in case. This is a super off the, uh, the right hand hive. And we must have done a pretty good job of uh, harvesting this one before because there's nothing, there's really no discernible honey in here at all, uh, which actually concerns me a little bit. I might want to feed this hive uh, as we get into winter time. But um, in the meantime, no honey's going to be coming out of this one. We're going to take some brood frames from that hive, um, and what we do is we, to prepare the box, is we, we bring the box here with five frames in it, it's a five frame nuke, and we leave one empty frame in the middle, that'll, that'll remain and we'll use that, They'll, the, the bees will build that out with the syrup we'll feed them, uh, and then we put two frames, or uh, we surround that with frames of brood, uh, either two or three, and then one frame of honey, and um, the reason we leave this frame in the middle is it helps to keep the shape of the box and makes the frames easier to insert uh, once we uh, pull them from the from the hive. Okay, these are the two honey supers we took off of, of the middle hive. And they definitely have some honey in it. In fact, here is a frame of fully capped honey from the upper super. What we're going to do is we're going to take the upper super and give that to the bees. Uh, and not touch it because it's got plenty of honey. It'll get them through the season, and uh, we'll see what's happening in the lower super. This bottom honey super, which we thought would be full of honey, which it does have some honey in it, but also because we don't use queen excluders, we got some brood in here. I know people will say, Jeff, why don't you use queen excluders? And I always say, well, we rarely get brood in the upper cha chamber, but there you have it. So we're going to put this hive back together the same way we, we found it. And um, we think it's a strong enough hive to survive winter. And then we'll deal with uh, honey collection next season. All right, here's the honey super from the uppermost. Or pardon me, the leftern, leftist, leftmost hive. And again, we took some honey off of this in May. And... Um, this was this this hive was the weakest because we started it as a, a nuke, an overwinter nuke this uh, past fall or past spring. I beg your pardon. Um, and even so, it did it did produce some honey. Here you see uh, a frame is partially capped, but I think what we want to do in order to help them get through the rest of the winter is to uh, leave this honey super on and then uh, take a look at them. Uh, and feed them probably some through through November to get them really well established for the winter time, especially because we keep hearing that the winter is supposed to be somewhat um, harsh this year. We'll see. So alas, we have after that um, hive inspection, we don't have any honey, which isn't surprising. They probably ate a bunch of it too during the summer dearth. Um, so we will feed. The two hives on the ex on the exteriors and the hive in the middle should be okay. And uh, it wasn't a total loss because we did collect some bees to make more, nu more nukes. And um, here they are. I'll show you how we package these up. These are actually what we use to ship our bees uh, across country. Uh, typically, we would use the inner cover. In this case, 
we have not used the inner cover. But the inner cover helps give one extra layer of protection to keep the bees from escaping. I'll show you how we wrap this up to make sure the bees don't escape in the interim and we still give them plenty of um, plenty of air circulation. You can see there's a big air hole there and a matching one on the other side and that seems to give them plenty of uh, air circulation, especially if it's not too cool. Um, one of the biggest dangers to bees in transit, besides crushing the queen because of uh, the frames bumping around, although these, this frame, or this box, has frame holders. Let's see if I can show you those. Frame holders like, like that. They tend to hold the frames pretty stiff uh, and pretty rigidly. Um, so the other big uh, the other big danger is bees overheating. So uh, that's a case where you can actually have too many bees in a box and they overheat. Um, which, is why we want to give, which is why we want to give them plenty of air circulation. So Willie, did we get any honey today? You know, it's, it's, it's too bad, but you know, it's better to leave it for the bees. It's better for them. Um, and these hives will generate as long as they survive the winter, which we're doing everything we possibly can by leaving honey to allow them to do so, um, they should be good for 100 pounds of hive. Um, and we would love to be selling DuPont Circle Hive, or pardon me, DuPont Circle Honey, which is really the honey that we have here. Um, if we had done, if we had done any harvesting today, it would have been using the crush and strain method, which I think you've seen before. So um, you can go on another video and see how we've done that. So I like these boxes because they do a great job of holding in the bees while giving them plenty of ventilation, which differs from some other boxes I've seen which only have perforations and not a full screen in the edges. Um, but I have found that without using the inner cover, these bees have found ways to get out. By the way, these boxes can be used as uh, temporary nucleus colonies as well. They do have an opening here, and you can slide the screen up and allow the bees to fly out. Um, so you can use these as temporary nukes. They are wax coated, so they can withstand the weather for a little bit. In fact, uh, in the springtime, I've used these as uh, as uh, uh, nukes and put them all over the city, just as ways to uh, get the bees to uh, acclimate and be a cheap form of nucleus colony. And then I can just ship them in this. Uh, these boxes cost about seven dollars uh, online, so uh, they're a brushy money. Um, in order to prevent the bees from getting out from some of these purple, from some of these areas that are uh, they're susceptible to come through, um, we've used we buy this um, shrink wrap packing tape for packing cellophane. We get it at Uline. This is five inch stuff. And first, we wrap the perimeter. Now, if we were shipping this to you, we would do even more. We'd have the inner cover on, and we'd wrap the inner cover completely enclose the inner cover before we even put the lid on and then do this. But for right now we're just going to use a shrink wrap. What it does, this does is it creates a barrier around the lip of the lid. So even if those bees could find a way to get out of the air hole or something, uh, they'd be stopped by this. The reason why that's important is because these nukes are going to go into my dining room a day until I can get them up on my roof, and um, we don't want any to start flying around in my house, although it wouldn't be the first time. And then you just rip it off, so it's even better than packing tape, I think. It's easy, easy to take off, it doesn't mar the surface when you take it off, and it creates a good seal. And then we just go around the top. many times because although it's, I find it better than packing tape, it's not quite as strong, but it does hold together. And you'll see that as I'm doing it, I'm covering these holes here. Oops. Sometimes it tears, no big deal. You just go back, it stick, sticks to itself. So in that sense, it's really handy. We don't get too crazy about putting a ton on. If we were shipping it, we would. We should try to ship some through UPS once. And a few bees got out, and UPS freaked. And sent them back to us, thankfully, and didn't charge us for it, because that was an expensive sell. Now we use the U.S. Postal Service 
parcel post. They seem to understand bees and get them there without any drama. And that's really how we wrap up a box to, tra to transfer. And again, these boxes will be sitting in somewhere in my house until we, um, until we put them in a permanent nuke, probably on my roof. These will be overwintered. We're going to add some queens to this. We did, before we put the uh, frames into these nucleus colonies, we did our best to try to make sure there was no queen on any of the frames. Uh, if there was, it would not be a tragedy. These bees would be queen themselves, although we set them back at a time when we wouldn't want them to be set back. Because it is September now, and although our winters don't really start to hit in, in earnest until December, uh, we still want to give these bees as much of a chance to, uh, to be successful uh, through the winter as they possibly can. So thanks for watching this about Church of the Pilgrims. Sorry we didn't, we didn't have any honey to harvest. Uh, thanks for watching BC Honeybees TV. And thanks for uh, supporting our mission to get more bees, and more rooftops, and frankly, and more yards here in the District of Columbia.